Hey everyone, I'm Zoe from Sleepopolis, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing the stages of sleep. If you didn't know, sleep has four stages. Three stages consist of non-rapid eye movement sleep, non-REM sleep, and one stage consists of rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep. I'll discuss more on these sleep stages later in the video. Did you know that before the discovery of REM sleep in the 1950s, sleep was thought to be a passive state in which the mind completely shut down? It's actually quite the opposite. Scientists found that our minds are active while we sleep, working to form memories, regulate our metabolism, and remove toxins from the brain. Now you're starting to understand why sleep is so important. Our health truly depends on it. I'd like to highlight that this video is meant to be informative, but shouldn't take the place of advice from your health care provider. If you feel you may be suffering from a sleep disorder or other medical condition, please see a trained professional. Now, let's start talking about the stages of sleep. So the way sleep is structured is fancy referred to as sleep architecture. As I mentioned just a moment ago, sleep consists of four stages, three non-REM stages called N1, N2, and N3, and one REM stage. So these four stages make up one sleep cycle, which takes approximately 90 minutes to complete. We need four cycles per night, which takes between seven and eight hours in total. So each stage of sleep has its own unique purpose, fulfilling a distinct physiological and psychological function, and they occur in the same sequence. The non-REM sleep stages are more similar to one another. During these stages, our eyes move minimally or not at all, and our muscles can move, though they typically don't. Our brain waves are less active, our breathing, blood pressure, and heart rate are all low in the end stages. Conversely, during REM sleep, our eyes move rapidly, our muscles are mostly or totally paralyzed, and we have vivid dreams. During REM sleep, our brain waves are actually similar to our brain waves while we're awake, which makes this stage closest to wakefulness. Wondering what exactly happens during each sleep stage? Well, stick around because I'm about to go over each stage in detail and tell you the changes that occur to your body and mind. I'd also encourage you to check out our REM sleep video, which is linked below, and you can find an article on REM sleep on Sleepopolis. So first up is the N1 stage, which occurs when we are transitioning from wakefulness to sleep. The stage usually begins within minutes of lying down, but can take longer to begin depending on sleep habits, disturbances, sleep disorders, and each person's unique physiology. Once this stage begins, it lasts between just one and seven minutes, so it's super short. There's some awareness of the environment, though most people begin to lose their sense of time and place during this stage. During the N1 stage, the following physiological changes occur. Your eyes close, your muscles begin to relax, your core body temperature decreases, your pineal gland begins to release sleep-inducing hormone melatonin, your brain waves shift from alpha waves of relaxation to theta waves of sleep, and you may start dreaming during this stage. So during this stage, our brain can shift easily from alpha waves to theta waves, and we might not even know that we're still asleep. It's quite easy to be disturbed during this stage. Something called hypnic jerks, or sleep starts, are also common during this stage. Hypnic jerks are sudden contractions of the muscles, and they can wake us up. They're sometimes accompanied by a sense of falling or tripping, but are still considered normal, though they can be worsened by caffeine, stress, or some medications. Scientists believe that hypnic jerks come from our early history when we slept in trees and were meant to keep us from falling, which is super cool. Difficulty entering the N1 stage is a common symptom of insomnia. Conversely, skipping the stage and going right to REM sleep is a form of narcolepsy. Next up is the N2 stage of sleep. About half of the four cycles of sleep are spent in this stage, making it the longest sleep stage. Though the stage is similar to the N1 stage, there are some key changes that occur. Eye movement stops, there's reduced environmental awareness, you'll have a lower heart rate and body temperature, your muscles will tense and relax, and your upper airway muscles relax. So if you talk in your sleep, it likely is occurring in the N1 or N2 stages when you're closest to wakefulness. An important event that happens in the N2 stage is the occurrence of something called sleep spindles. So these are one to two second bursts of activity and result from interactions between the thalamic and cortical neurons. To help you picture it, I'd imagine a picture of a brain. The neurons from the thalamus, which is located near the center, and the neurons from the cortex, which is located near the top, start to interact with one another to create these spindles. And these sleep spindles are believed to be essential for forming memories and remembering dreams and they help transfer short-term memory to long-term memory. Another brain activity seen during N2 sleep is the occurrence of something called K-complexes. K-complexes are brain waves generated in the cortex. They last for more than half a second and can be seen on an EEG. K-complexes help us process information and help synchronize the sleep stages. They're believed to help us sleep by preventing us from waking up to non-threatening external stimuli. However, too much time spent in this phase isn't a good thing. 
can indicate a sleep disorder like sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, or insomnia. If you suffer from restless leg syndrome, I've actually linked a video we made on it in the description below, and it has tons of information on this disorder as well as how to manage it. Next up is the N3 stage. This is the last non-REM stage and is commonly referred to as slow wave sleep. It usually starts about 40 minutes after falling asleep and is the most restorative of the sleep stages. This is a deep stage of sleep and it's difficult to be woken up during this time. If you're woken up during this stage, you'll likely feel groggy and your mental performance will be slower for about 30 minutes. This is due to the fact that there's reduced cerebral blood flow during this stage. So here's a list of the other physiological changes that occur during this stage. Your body releases hormones that help with appetite control. Blood flow to your brain decreases while blood flow to your muscles increases, which gives them oxygen and restorative nutrients. Your blood pressure and heart rate decrease even further. Your memories continue to be consolidating. Your breathing becomes slower and the sleep spindle activity decreases. So this stage is absolutely essential for your body's recovery. It helps with growth and repair of bones, muscles, and tissues, and is also essential for supporting the immune system. People who don't get enough N3 sleep may experience a reduced ability to consolidate memories. All right, now the final stage of the sleep cycle, and in my opinion, the most interesting is REM sleep. The shift to REM sleep is totally different than the shifts between the N phases. Though REM is the last stage in the sleep cycle, it is the lightest stage of sleep after N1, which means you can be most easily roused in this phase other than N1. So REM sleep is characterized by a distinct sequence of body movements that indicate the transition out of N3 sleep, paralysis of the muscles, rapid and random eye movement, fluctuations in breathing, circulation, and body temperature that are totally unique to REM sleep and don't occur in the other sleep stages, and of course, vivid dreams. As I mentioned earlier, during the end stages, the mind is restful, but during REM sleep, the mind is active. Brainwaves during this stage are most similar to those when we are awake. The REM stage gets longer with each sleep cycle and is longest during the last cycle. Interesting, although REM sleep is the most similar physiologically to being awake, it's the furthest stage from wakefulness in the sleep cycle. In fact, only babies and narcolepsy sufferers can go straight from being awake to REM sleep. For most, all the end stages of sleep must precede REM sleep. As the sleep cycle repeats throughout the night, you spend a different amount of time in the end sleep and REM sleep stages. Typically, in the first two sleep cycles, more time is spent in the end stages of sleep, while the following cycles tend to have more time in the REM stage of sleep. Additionally, the amount of time you spend in each cycle depends on when you go to sleep. Those who go to sleep early spend more time in the end stages of sleep since it tends to be dominant between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., while those who go to bed late and wake late to spend more time in REM sleep, which occurs more often between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. This actually has to do with our circadian rhythms, which is our body's internal clock that regulates our sleep-wake cycle. So REM sleep actually decreases as we age. Babies spend up to 50% of their time asleep in REM sleep, while it's closer to 20% for adults. Are you interested in learning more about REM sleep? I would really recommend checking out our REM sleep video. It's linked in the description below. And I'd recommend you check out our other help sleep content on Sleepopolis, which can be found on our homepage under the tab Sleep A to Z. To feel well rested and enjoy all the health benefits of sleep, your sleep has to be both sufficient and efficient, meaning completion of each stage and multiple cycles. Failure to achieve REM sleep can lead to fatigue and cognitive impairment. It can also lead to reduced immunity, impaired hormone production, changes in metabolism, and high risk of neurological disorders like dementia. An inefficient sleep cycle can actually lead to the same consequences as sleep deprivation, including reduced concentration, poor hand-eye coordination, daytime sleepiness, and irritability. All right, everyone, that's it for this video on the stages of sleep. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Also, make sure to subscribe to Sleepopolis for more informative videos, mattress reviews, and giveaways.